What's up, everybody? How we doing? It's another beautiful Sunday session. I think we're on episode, what, 35 right now? So we've been pumping these Sunday sessions out. Uh, and I love it. It's one of my favorite days of the week. I got a few favorite days of the week. I think every day is my favorite day of the week. You know, it's just how my mind works. Super positive. I spent a lot of years being super negative, got me absolutely nowhere in life. So now I switched it up, completely different spectrum. And life's good, life's beautiful, nothing to complain about. Well, I'm sure there is, it's just nobody wants to hear it anyway. So keep grinding it out. Welcome everybody. Diego, hello. Zycom, what's up? Chaps, how you doing? Brandon, Brandon, what's up? Shashi. Same thing as always, I'm here to provide tons of value and information and insight about scaling your e-commerce business. So any question, please ask away. I'm an open book. There's nothing I really hold back in these lives. Obviously, if it's something that's going to be uh, or more extreme detail, then I'm probably going to pass on answering the question or I guide you to our community to get that question answered. Uh, but I'm excited to be here and excited to hear what we're going to talk about today because you guys determine where the conversation goes. Daniel got our first question over here. If a product is international and it says international on the listing, on the comments, customers say it's fake, but it's not. Is that bad? No. So you want to make sure that the international products you're sell selling with an EIN, which is a European European article number, an EIN versus a UPC, which is a universal product code. Um, EINs are specific to Europe. So if it's an international listing and it says international listing, it's it's good to go, right? And definitely some people will complain because it's gonna look slightly different than the US version, but as long as it says international version in the listing, you are good. <clears throat> but you gotta make a decision based on how many complaints you're getting, um, if you're going to continue to sell it or not. Official Ecom David first had put, how do I find my first wholesale supplier? So the best place to start would be Google. Google's the best place to start using basic keyword research. Say you're located in Miami, you can start with Miami uh, grocery distributors, Miami grocery wholesalers, Miami toy distributors, Miami toy distributors or wholesalers, right? And you just expand from there. You go from Miami to Florida and then the Northeast and then national, right? The reason why I suggest starting in your immediate location first is because cost of shipping will be very low, if not free. You know, there's also a great method I provide on my YouTube channel right here. Uh, which we teach you, you just search Amazon Lit, how to source profitable products, and it will pop up. It's about a 15 minute video. It'll really teach you a lot of game about how to open up new wholesale accounts. Also, I suggest going to trade shows. So ASD is the next trade show I recommend going to. It's at the end of February in 2023. So it's about three months away. And there's over a thousand vendors there that you'll get to talk to and build relationships. So I highly suggest being there as well. Um, J Dub said, are you aware of any regions in the U.S. that lack wholesalers and manufacturers as opposed to other regions? I use a prep center in Texas and I struggle with finding wholesalers. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely better regions than others. You know, obviously anything in the L.A. area, the Miami area, the New York area is going to have a larger supply of wholesalers and distributors just because they're big metropolitan areas and also other big metropolitan cities like Chicago, um, they'll have better suppliers or more, not necessarily better, but they'll have more suppliers than some of um, these other areas. Let's say you're in the middle of Nebraska, right? If you're in the middle of Nebraska or, some, or Texas, Texas is big. I think it can take 15 hours to drive from side to side of Texas. So Texas is very large. So if you're in one of these smaller towns in Texas, absolutely. But to your point, all you need to do is find a wholesaler that's located somewhere else and ship your products to a prep center that's closer to that wholesaler and leverage that opportunity growth. Yeah, the Northeast is definitely a good place to have a, a prep center and a warehouse. And it's a great place to live because there's a lot of opportunity here as well. But just because you don't live here doesn't mean you can't open accounts with suppliers that are here. Yeah, any tips on managing credit card spend to scale? So you should have two to three credit cards. A uh, great credit card is the Amex Plum card. It gives you a 60-day grace period. Another one is the Chase Inc. card for inventory. It gives you one and a half points back. And what you want to be do, what you want to do is you want to be maxing out those credit cards as long as you can pay it back every 30 days, right? With the Plum cards, you get 60 days. So you want to continue to pay it back, and then you 
after a few months of doing that, you'll request for a credit increase. Now that credit increase will allow you to get a larger line of credit with the company that you have the credit card with. So let's say you have 60,000 in credit now, you ask for a credit card increase after using your credit and repaying it back consistently for a few months, and then they bump you up to $100,000 credit, right? So you use that credit to invest in inventory to buy more products to grow your SKU counts on Amazon, because that's the name of the game, right? Offer more products to the customer so you can consistently win the buy box. Because if you're losing the buy box on product A, you have the buy box on product B and C. If you're losing the products, uh, the buy box on product C, you have it on products A and B. So you're able to get consistent sales. Bailey asked, do we list FBA and FBM for most of your wholesale products? If so, price differently thanks so i uh, know we currently only list fba on our wholesale products but in the past we have definitely listed fba and fbm especially if you're a newer seller in q4 there's going to be some restock limits that you may not be able to get over so what i would suggest doing then is listing those products fbm because you can literally sell them tonight and ship them out tomorrow it's a great way to move inventory it's a great way to drive additional revenue in the fourth quarter especially if you're just getting started there's just a lot of opportunities opportunities, especially um, with some of these wholesale deals and retail deals where you can get a great price product, make $10, $12 on it profit, and you could sell 10, 20 units a day. So you're talking $200 in profits a day. And that's just one product. Now imagine getting 10 of those. Now you went from $200 a day in profits to $2,000 a day in profits. And that's just the Q4 hustle, right? So you just duck and dive amongst those deals and make this shit happen, you feel me? You recommend using a VA to source wholesale leads. I, I personally do not, I do not, right? And I, I, I brought this up before, I'll bring it up again, but Abdullah, Abdullah, let me ask you, um, let's say, what's the number one selling product and let's just pick, uh, what's a big, let's do, let's do Afghanistan, right? Or Bali, what's the number one selling product in Bali right now, Abdullah? Or what's the number one selling product in Spain? Pick any country and tell me the number one selling product in there or the trending products right now. You're going to have no idea. You have absolutely no idea. So how can you expect someone from a different country to build the right relationships within the United States? It's very challenging. There's a few barriers. There's a language barrier. There's also a cultural barrier that make it much more challenging for someone overseas to build the relationships. Plus, there's a knowledge barrier. Right? They don't understand the business like you do. So I suggest for finding wholesaler leads, you can use virtual assistants to compile the information, but the reaching out and the contacting should be done by you initially. It's going to teach you a lot about the game. You're going to be able to answer questions that the wholesaler may have that the virtual assistant will not have the answer to, which will increase your chances of securing that wholesale account. Uh, Jay Dub said hey, he actually lives two hours from New York City, but he just found this particular prep center in Texas and their rates are very reasonable and I like working with them, but I don't think I'll need another. All right. Well, yeah, I suggest leveraging multiple prep centers. So you should have one in Texas. You could also have one in, in New York. So now you got kind of the Midwest covered. You got the Northeast covered and then you get one out in L.A. or San Francisco and then you got the, the West Coast covered. Right. So now you're not if you find a wholesaler in New York, you're not shipping your products all the way to Texas. You're keeping them local, which will allow you to really scale out that way. Uh, going national will definitely cut into profits. And that's why you always want to ask these companies you're opening wholesale accounts with. You want to ask them, what do I have to meet as far as your prerequisites? Usually it's a money value. What do I have to meet to get free to free shipping? What do I have to qualify to get free shipping, right? They might have two MOQs. A lot of these companies love MOQ number one is to just place an order. Let's say it's $1,500. You have to meet the minimum $1,500 to even place an order. Then MOQ number two might be $6,000, right? And with $6,000, you get free shipping. So the goal would be to meet MOQ number two and get free shipping, which will alleviate your expense on the front end of the product, 100% without a doubt. Um, branded distributors are pretty hesitant to work with Amazon sellers nowadays, how to provide them value to differentiate myself from the competition. Yeah, so I think the best way to build these relationships, because they are very hesitant, because they're literally getting dozens of email requests a day for people to open 
wholesale accounts. And it's like, how do they know who's better, who's trustworthy, who's not? They have absolutely no idea. So one of the ways I like to provide value to these companies is physically going to go meet them in person. So I figure out what trade shows they're going to. I book the airfare. I go to that trade show. I meet them. I give them a physical handshake, look them in the eye and have an in-person connection with them. One on one conversation. And I let them know that, hey, I do not simply resell products on the Internet. I operate a legitimate business where I provide a service to the end consumer where I'm essentially the middleman between your inventory and the end customer. Right. And my goal is to provide them your products at the best pricing. So in order for me to do that, I need the best pricing from you. And I guarantee if I receive the best pricing from you, I will be able to scale this relationship much quicker, which in turn will make you more money. I'm looking for a lifelong partnership, not a one off product purchase. Right. So letting them know that will definitely help you secure the deal. And then you're just not the everyday person. So here's another tip too: the email that you send them. Make sure it's thought out and it's concise. Don't just create an automatic email that you're sending out to all these vendors. Do a little research on them, right? Make it unique because they're getting a little, literally a dozen emails a day that say, hey, I work with so-and-so company. I have the capability of scraping your products real fast and putting together orders quickly. Please provide me your wholesale catalog. Like you and 40 other people sent that same exact email, right, in the past week to that company. So it's like, you gotta separate yourself from the gang. You know, yeah, it's possible Wizards of FBA to run a wholesale business using completely prep centers. It will cut into your margins a little bit, but if that's the option you need to go with, it's better to start your business doing that than not have a business at all, right? Because I know there's some people in our community, sellers are right, they're doing 50, 60, 70K a month and they never touch a product. And they're fine with that. They're making an additional four or $5,000 a month in profit. They never have to touch the inventory, right? So they have an additional income of say 50K a year. They work 10 hours a week and they're comfortable with that, right? There's other people who are like, that's not enough for me. I don't want to make $5,000 a month. I want to make $50,000 a month. And that's when you got to make a decision as a business owner. Okay, am I willing to scale this operation out, bring some, bring on some employees and get a warehouse space, right? Because that's the difference between a side hustle and a legitimate business, right? It all starts here first. It's like the commitment that you make to say, okay, I'm no longer going to be operating this with the side hustle mentality. I'm going to go all in and I'm going to treat this thing like a business and I'm going to scale it the way a business needs to be scaled. And in order to scale a company, you got to have appointed positions and staff to help you do that because it's nearly impossible to do it by yourself. You know, we definitely aren't as large as we are because we do everything myself and Sebastian does everything himself. If we were to do that, we would never scale to the level that we're at. It would be impossible. There's just not enough time in the day. But now we have employees. It started off with one additional employee, and then it went to two, and then it went to five, and then it went to 10, and that, then 15, then 25, and now we're at about 50. And like each time we scale out a new position, we properly train them based on our experience. Right. So another reason why a lot of sellers fail in the beginning is because they don't understand how to do something and they try paying someone else to do it. But when you don't understand how to do something and you pay someone else to do it, you instantly lose value because you don't know where they're making mistakes. And I see it happen all the time, specifically with product procurement. Right. Or your buyer, your purchaser. I work with some companies now. They have 40, 50 virtual assistants in another country, and literally all 40 or 50 of their virtual assistants are purchasing the same amount of inventory that one of my buyers is buying. Right. And why is that? It's because my buyer is properly trained. He's doing the work of 40 virtual assistants. So it's all about the proper training. I have a large wholesaler who has someone internally who creates listings on Amazon for them. OK, problem is that they list the items badly and you need a letter of approval to modify the listings. Any tips to show them a good listing, good listings and potential? Yeah. So what I would do, I would put together what I call a brand pitch deck. Right. And I would take. Some of their current listings take some screenshots of them. I do some market research and find similar selling products that have uh, much better listings on Amazon, preferably with brand registry, enhanced brand content, possibly even a brand video. They definitely have a brand store. And I would send them the pictures of their listings uh, as well as a pitch of what their listings could look like if they partnered with you, a professional Amazon seller who can get that set up from them. Right. So now it becomes you're giving them this value proposition of, hey, listen, 
you obviously don't know what you're doing. Obviously, say it more eloquently than that. But you obviously, based on your poor listing creations, you don't know what you're doing. I will come in and fix all this for you, right? All I ask is that I get an exclusive relationship with you, right? Or I get the lowest wholesale pricing. And now you got a whole new opportunity that opens. So we call that a brand pitch deck. And in our in our uh, in our our brand workshop, we provide you the pitch deck that we use to secure these brand relationships, right? And we give you also contracts to secure the deal as well. Contracts that break down, you know, an exclusive relationship that these companies will not sell, distribute, donate, or give their products to any other third party sellers or Amazon direct, right? Essentially letting them know that, hey, I have no problem partnering with you, but this contract is null and void if you start selling your products to other third party sellers. Um, yeah, so Hussein just asked, is there any additional value? Basically, this is his question. Is there any additional value you could provide instead of just saying, um, hey, can I get your wholesale catalog? Absolutely. So what you could do is if you already see like on their website, or let's say they sent you a catalog already. If you already see a product that you've sold before, let's say you normally pay $5, they got it for $5.50, right? I would put together an email and say, hey, listen, I can realistically purchase 400 items of this a month, you know, and I'm willing to commit to three months of purchase. Um, but I need this product at $4.60, right? So you used to pay five, they have it listed at $5.25, and you're going to request them a price of $4.60, right? What that $4.60 will do is allow them to know, okay, I could sell an additional, what I say, three months, 400 units. I can sell an additional 1,200 units of this times $4.60, you're looking at about $5,500. So then they can run some numbers and see if they can get bigger discounts from their vendors that they're purchasing from to then pass some of that discount on to you. So initially making those commitments early on, if you have data on the product, is definitely a move, 100%. It lets them know that you're willing to work between the lines. I get really paranoid that a customer might file a lawsuit and Amazon might take all the funds. Is this an issue you have faced? No, I've, I've, I've never seen that happen in my entire, or maybe one or two people. One or two people where they've actually had to go through with a lawsuit. And at the end of the day, the lawsuit that they went through with, it didn't ruin their lives, right? So... A, you get insurance that helps protect you. B, you create an LLC, which is a limited liability company, which completely separates your personal expenses versus your business business expenses. So it gives you the level of protection that you're looking for. So God forbid something like that ever did happen, which, like I said, I've seen it happen maybe once or twice. Um, you don't have to worry about them taking your personal assets because it's completely separate business opportunities. Yeah, we have a course. Uh, the links are in our Instagram bio. You can check them out. There's an application page. There's a there's a there's a link to just purchase purchase it directly. We give you a few options because I feel like everybody's at a different place in their journey, right? Some people are in the information stage where they're searching for a guide, someone like me, to show them the way of how to build a successful Amazon business, right? And if you're in the information stage, then your goal would be to book a call, right? And you and I could jump on a phone call. I can hammer out the details, and then you can get set up. Um, through that phone call, right? Other people are on the like, you know what? I've seen this guy on Instagram and YouTube for five, six years now. I trust him. He's obviously helping people build their businesses. I'm ready to join now. I don't need to speak with him. I want what he has. So we have a, a link in our bio where you can actually purchase the course right out front right there as well. So we give you some different options there. And it's not just a course, it's uh, weekly mentoring, Facebook community. You also get access to all of our live events at discounted rates. So for example, we'll be at ASD in February doing a trade show walkthrough where I walk the show floor with you, introduce new vendors I've been doing business with for years. Uh, we have BGHL, Business Growth Tax Live, which is a live Amazon networking event. About 200 people are going to be there. So another great opportunity. And then the following day, we have our Inner Circle event, which is reserved for members of our Inner Circle. Have you guys been able to adapt to the new workflow? Um, yeah, we haven't really seen an effect in the new workflow. We're still using MWS to update our shipments and stuff. So it hasn't really affected us. Um, but at the end of 2023, they will be um, putting out, making the full transition from MWS to SPAPI. Um, if you're having an issue with workflow, a uh, good software that can help with it as far as shipments is 2D Workflow. Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. Uh, Carlos Alvarez, who's a good friend of mine down at uh, Amazon Seller Meetup down in Miami. Uh, and he said only two out of every 10 products, 10 private label products will uh, succeed. That's a pretty decent and fair estimate 
of the success rate for private label. And listen, I'm not against private label. I sell private label. I have five, six brands that we sell private label that do about five or $6 million a year. I'm a firm believer in building out private label brands, but here's what happens when people start with private label first, right? They take their only five or $7,000, they put it into a private label product. Usually what happens is it takes a little too long for them to produce it, to get the samples, to get everything figured out, right? So by the time it goes to Amazon, it's no longer a good product because the competition is too great. There's someone dominating the market, whatever the case may be. So their entire five to seven thousand dollar investment, they now have to sell their inventory for literally pennies on the dollar, 10 cents on the dollar, or maybe 15 at the most. Right. So that five thousand dollar investment now turns into a thousand bucks. But with wholesale, you basically eliminate the loss opportunity right because you're it's like having a stop loss set on the stock market like the lead the most you're going to lose on a product's maybe 20 percent right so let's say you have that five thousand dollars now that five thousand dollars because you the, the the couple products you purchased all were trash because you didn't know what you're doing now you lose 20 percent of that five thousand you still have four thousand to use the experience you learned spending or losing that thousand bucks to then double down and go with what's working, right? And that's why I always suggest like, if you're just getting started, you know where to start, it's so worth it to just pay for guidance. It's so worth it. It's like, it'll solve all your problems from the beginning so you don't make those problems yourself. Yeah, we have a mentorship. It's live coaching, weekly live coaching calls, our framework, and we're in the process too. So anybody who joins these sellers arrival before the end of the year, they're gonna, they're gonna make out huge, right? Because what we're doing right now is we're refilming a lot of the content. Um, because Amazon changes everything all the time. Their user interface, their terms of service. So I always want to make sure my course is superior to others, right? So we're updating a lot of the content. And when, when it's completely updated, the price will go up, right? Probably 50% from what it is now. Um, so like the benefit of joining now is you will get automatically inputted into eSellers Ride 2.0. So not only can you start growing with eSellers Ride 1.0, but then you don't have to pay the 50% increase to be 2.0 because you already be grandfathered in. But that's only if you join now. Um, how to know if a distributor is authentic or not since Amazon doesn't accept invoices from every distributor. You can simply ask them, you know, a very common question. You're not the first Amazon seller to reach out to them. So you can simply ask them like, hey, do your invoices work for approval? Have you ever had a company submit your invoices? Was there any issues? When I first started my wholesale company, people would ask me that. And I had to tell them in the beginning, no, my invoices didn't work because they did it. Took me about six months to get my invoices to work, right? But the people who asked and I told them, no, they knew they couldn't place orders with me because the risk first reward scenario, the, the reward wasn't there for the risk of potentially getting a product and not having an invoice to sell it. So you could simply just ask that question. 99% of your problems in life, business, family, friends will come from a lack of communication. Simply communicating your thoughts to the person that you're trying to build a relationship with or make something happen with will allow you to really scale these relationships to the level you need to be at. Excuse me one second. Hello, Eric speaking. Good afternoon. Hey, how's it going? This is Sarah Couch. Oh my God, you are the best teacher on earth. I've been watching your Amazon lit. It's driving me freaking crazy. Every time I see your Amazon little Instagram, it's like reading my favorite book over and over and over again and making sure I don't miss a word. Nice. Right here is my little trouble because I am uh, a busy guy in New York City. This is where I live. And my trouble is this. Uh, I've been looking for you on your email, on your uh, YouTube to get your course because I just saw you now mention that if you have my course, you get grandfathered into the new updates that are coming soon. So yes. you were saying on your Amazon list just now. Yes. But I, I, I'm lost. I can't find your course. Yeah. I don't know, and I don't know how many YouTubes I gotta go to to finally see when you provide a course and then it says, no, it's not available here right now like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, that's crazy. I need to get it now. No, well, listen, brother, first of all, what's your first name, man? Oh, the first name is Norman, but I let everybody call me Santana. Okay. So Santana. My last name is Yates. Yeah, Santana, man. So I appreciate you reaching out. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna send you a quick text message. In that text message will be a direct link um, to sign up for the community. All right? 
okay, the commuter, and then what about the five year course? Yeah, so, yeah. So, all so I can do right now, all I can afford is a payment plan. I, I don't have that's, a thousand cash right now. That, that's fine. We have a we have a payment plan. It's eight ninety seven a month. Um, but you, when I say community, you get access to everything. You get access to the live weekly coaching. You get access to the Facebook community. And you actually get access to the framework that I was just talking about, the step-by-step -step guidance as well. Okay, but you said the payment plan is eight ninety-five a month. Eight ninety-seven a month. Eight ninety-seven. Oh my! For how many months? Four. Oh wow. Okay, then I'm gonna have to start saving up because. That, that, that's not on my. That's not. That's not financially capable right now. After the holidays, it will be, but then it's going to be more expensive. So, eight ninety seven a month now. That's going to kill me. Yeah. Um. Ouch. Yeah. Well, ouch. let me let me ask and you I this. I'm have to... Let me ask you this. Why do you think eight ninety seven a month is going to kill you? No, it's just me because I have back to rent that I have to pay credit cards. Um, you know, just people that I owe money to for helping me out during the pandemic and being out of work. But now that I'm back on my feet working, I got to catch up on those bills. I got you. And that right there, if I gave you the first month of that amount, I have no money to invest. That's how broke I am. Yeah. Now, yeah. if I had credit cards that I could play with and be like, oh, no, 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 no. I can match up this credit card. But then I have two other credit cards for $2,000. I don't have it like that. But if I did, I'd be smiling all over the place now because I believe in you. I trust you. I think that what you're doing to help people is legit. But I ran into a whole bunch of people who claim they can help you make a lot of money on Shopify, they can help you with this and this. And I'm finding out down the road that they're, they're just scammers. And I hate scammers. I can't do it. Yeah. I'll shoot a scammer because I served, it, I served this country in the army. And if I get pissed, I'm like, look, man, you don't want me with a pistol pointing it at you and getting angry because you're a scammer. Yeah. I don't play that. Yeah. Well, listen, Santana, you obviously called me for a reason. You know we have the information and the insights that's going to allow you to get to the next level. So this is what I suggest to you. Um, as soon as we have the call, I'm going to send you a text with the link to join. When you got the funds together, you just smash that link and you get involved in the community, right? Because I think right now you're so focused on the bills and the struggles and what's going on in your life that you're failing to realize that the opportunity that you take right now can potentially change your life for the rest of your life. Right, so this is a fear-based, a fear-based decision that you're making. But I'd also never encourage anybody to take their last couple hundred bucks and put it in, especially if you have pending bills that you need to pay. So what I'd say to you is get your funds together, and when you're ready to join, we'll be here. Okay, so eight ninety-seven a month for four months straight. Yes. I'm gonna start processing that right now. I'm trying to figure how I can cut something, and at least try to figure I can get four hundred dollars a month saved up so I can at least knock out two months and then I, I, I have a cushion time to, to work on the other two months that yeah. I need to pay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're also going to want, want to work on opening up some business lines of credit with some credit card companies. So if you don't have an LLC yet, I suggest creating one. I have a very intuitive step-by-step -step video on YouTube to show you how to do that. Create that LLC, get a business bank account, and then start opening up one or two credit cards through that business bank account to allow you to get business credit, which you can then use to not only join the community, but also to purchase inventory. Okay. Okay. I look forward to making a lot of money with you. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to learning from you. I really do. All right. Cool. I really do. Cool. Santana, well, listen, I'm in the middle of a live, a live YouTube call, so I'm going to break out of here, but I appreciate the phone call. We're excited to have you in the community very soon. And uh, we look forward to having you on the team, all right? Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to take you away from Instagram. I'm so sorry you're, about that. You're not taking me away, man. I just made you a part of the, the, the call. So it's all good. Don't worry about it. All right. God bless and take care. Yeah, right? Thank God you bless. so much for your support. Absolutely, Santana. Have a beautiful day. All right. Back to it. Uh,